What is up y'all, welcome back to another video. In this video we are back and looking at another prospect. Today we are going to be looking at the Detroit Lions 6th round draft pick, right? It was 6th round, right? I think it was 6th round. Hopefully I don't have to cut that out. 6th round draft pick, John Penasini. Now he got paid, alright? My guy got paid yesterday. So I think it's only right to look at what John Penasini gives to the Detroit Lions. So that's what we are going to be doing in today's video. Again, comment below players you guys want to see me do next. I have had some comments for wide receivers and stuff. Definitely let me know what you guys want to see. But anyways, we're going to be checking out John Penasini today. And I really do enjoy doing these. So if you guys want to see more, definitely let me know in the comments below. Also, leave a like. And uh, yeah, let's continue to go through this stuff. So we're talking about John Penasini, as I have mentioned before. And uh, this is the defensive tackle that we selected out of Utah in this year's draft towards the end of the draft. This is our second to last pick, I believe. Now, John Penasini gives us basically a run stuffer. On the surface, he gives you a run stuffer. And usually when you look late for players, you're just looking for a couple of things that you can kind of believe you can build on or guys that can make the team and give you some sort of impact, whether it's depth, whatever it may be, maybe down the road they can grow into something. And defensive linemen do have a history of doing pretty solid, at least defensive tackles do, when you select them late in the draft. This was a really good pick by the Detroit Lions because they needed some depth at defensive tackle. They brought in Danny Shellen in free agency. They also brought in Nick Williams. But having too much depth there is never a bad thing because the Detroit Lions schematically really need to have a good run-stopping defensive tackle. The Lions look for good run-stopping defensive tackles under Matt Patricia's scheme. They want linebackers that are versatile. They want defensive ends that can get pressure. And then they want covered sacks, all right? They want great corners. They want a back end. That's why we talked about, if you guys haven't seen my Why Lions selected Jeffrey Okuda video, check it out. They work back to front kind of, right? They go secondary first and they really put a big emphasis on bringing in secondary players. I have a whole breakdown in that video and then they kind of work to the front, but in the front, that defensive tackle position, because Lions usually don't have tons of defensive linemen and they don't blitz a ton, they're not looking for tons of sacks. They want that defensive tackle position to be able to stop the run and halt the run. Because if you can stop the run first, which is Matt Patricia's, again, his philosophy, stop the run, then, uh, you know, you can stop an offense. So it's all about stopping the run first. And that's first and foremost. And getting run stoppers at that DPT position is super, super important. And, uh, yeah, we talked about how Snacks Harrison had a really bad season in 2019 compared to 2018. And it hurt the team. It hurt all across the board. So adding a guy like this can be good, you know, first rotational depth right now. Now, but in the future, when Danny Shellen and Nick Williams are off of contract, at least we don't know what the future is going to look like, this will be a guy that could potentially step into that role. Right here is just a still image. This is, I think this is a still image. Yes, yeah, still image. Okay, I just want to make sure. This is basically what the Detroit Lions defense looks like at times, right? They run a lot of different defensive sets. But the main thing I want to throw out there is that the Lions don't blitz a lot. And uh, one thing I do want to show is that, okay, so for example, they're bringing four guys here, right? You got Flowers. Um, I think this is... I don't know. My brain's tired. I don't know. I don't even want to try. Okay. It's not Aishon. I think it's Adkins. Adkins. Or Aishon or Adkins. I can't tell if that's a one or not. Uh, then obviously Snacks and Kennard. Can, those uh, guys are no longer here. It's weird. Yeah, those two are gone. But anyways, you know, you bring four. There's usually five offensive linemen, excluding tight ends as a state of block. So when you're base at four against three, you're going to have a center and a guard. Now the center is usually going to take one of the other interior offensive linemen, unless, you know, they have schematically decided to do something else, but that's usually what's going to happen. And that that's basically a double team. So they're double teaming a tackle. And a lot of team times they would double team a guy like Snacks or, you know, in this case, whoever the other defense tackle is here, and it would make other players one-on-one. -on -one. So that leaves Trey Flowers one-on-one. -on -one. It would leave Kennard one-on-one, -on -one. leave either one of the defense tackles on one-on-one -on -one if the tight ends leave. So you're not blitzing, you have everybody on one-on-one, -on -one, and then one player with double teamed. So if a guy can take on that double team role, now you have guys like Trey Flowers, who you paid $90 million to win that battle. So that's kind of what you see here. That's that's really the only reason I throw, showed this picture. I don't need to show you this whole picture for eight seconds. I need to, how long is this picture? Okay, boom, let's get up to the, let's get up to speed, okay. Now, here's just another little example. And now here's basically an example of what it will look like when it plays out. However, this is an example of guys that you have on the field not producing pressure, okay? Now, I'm not saying these guys never do, but I'm just saying here, this is the matchups you want. They just aren't able to get pressure. So this obviously gets the Chiefs. Um, you're gonna see a snap. You're gonna see kind of a double team here. So the center's gotta decide. He's gotta decide what he wants to do. Um, this one's kind of a tough situation. Because, you know, this this tackle kind of, I think the edge rusher here backed out, but I can't really tell. The tackle doesn't really have a job here. But either way, the center decides to go with Okwara. So it's going to leave. I think this is, who is this? Is this Snacks? I think it was Snacks. Whoever this is, who is this? That's Kevin Strong, y'all. My fault. Kevin Strong. And then you got Christian Jones over here. So those guys are going to be, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. That's where you need to win, right? That's where you need to get pressure. These guys need to create pressure because we're not going to blitz. We, we're all about them cover sacks. That's why statistically, 
Patriot defenses, Patricia defenses usually don't have a lot of sacks. So that's kind of what it's going to look like. And I just want to point it out there. Here's more of a successful one, I would say. It wasn't completely successful. But again, Snacks takes on the double team. So everybody else is one-on-one. -on -one. And then you got Kennard and Trey Flowers coming off the edge. And when Trey Flowers got going, he looked a lot better. And that's why the Lions brought in Julian Aquar and those pass rushers. So that's what we need out of John Penasini. Now we're going to look at John Penasini a little bit and talk about what his role will be and why I think it'll be what it is. So here, starting here. With the first play, you can see, I think this is Bradley and I. He's on his team. They also have Le Leaky Fotu, who is another defensive tackle. Again, the color is like this for copyright reasons. And then here is, uh, here's our guy, John Penasini. All right, now he's a defensive tackle. Now, I'm going to point out a couple pros and cons before we start watching him that I see. And then I'll try to kind of show those as we watch. So, pros. He has a nice club move, okay? That's something that he goes to often. That's like one of the only moves he has, which also throws you into the cons category when he doesn't have tons of other moves. He doesn't really have a counter move when it comes to pass rush. Um, he's a good run stopper. He's a good run stopper. That's who he drafted him for, right? He's a known as a defensive tackle run stopper. He's had some solid pass rush grades, at least back in 2018. He was better at it, but he's just not like a pure defensive tackle pass rusher. That's just not what he is. It's hard to find those, but he's not, right? He doesn't get a lot of pass rusher like some of the top picks do. He is a run stuffer. He's a goal line player. He's a special teams player. He's a guy that can help rotate in and just stuff the run. You know, when you believe the team's going to run on early downs, that's what he's going to bring to the table for the Lions, and that's what's huge. Uh, let me see what else I wrote here. Um, yeah, I just don't see a great pass rush ability. You know, it's just not there. It doesn't have a lot of moves. Doesn't get to the quarterback very often. And I think watch, when I watched him, it completely backed that up. He's a powerful player. One thing that I do like from him is that he's got powerful hands. Um, he doesn't release very well. He's really slow off his release, which is not good, right? When he snap it, I think this one actually shows it. He's really slow off his release, but he's a very powerful player that plays through the whistle. He plays with a lot of heart. This guy will play to the complete end. He will never stop chasing guy. Even if he's, you know, you're not going to catch him, right? The running back's 30 yards away. He's still trying to run him down. He's not that fast, not super athletic either, but he's one of those guys that just plays really hard. So this is that heart. It's the run stop ability. It's the powerful strength in, uh, you know, kind of the arms with the club moves and then his lower body. But then the cons on the other side to me is pass rush, release, um, just pass rush moves in general. He doesn't have tons of moves. And, uh, you know, I think he has a little bit of versatility, but not... I don't know, man. He wouldn't really be able to stand up to me. You know, he only, he's not going into a two-point stance or anything like that. So let's watch him now. So as you can see right here is our guy, John Penasini. And there, look at that release. Do you guys see what I'm seeing there? He is the last person to get off the ball. Now, this is the only time you'll see it. I threw a couple in here, but you'll see this a lot when you watch him. Anai, obviously, a great pass rusher is already off the ball because he's able to time that. He's able to see a little bit easier, maybe too. But again, he is the last one to move. And that's something that I saw. And I was like, ah, oh, man, that's not good. And I want to see if it kept coming up. And it did. So that really concerned me. But you can see, you know, he plays hard. You know, he's smart. He's a smart player. He's able to get his arm up there, which is great awareness. And then he's able to chase down the quarterback. Again, never giving up on the play, even though he didn't get a lot of rush. Now, here's kind of the double team situation, right? So you can see this for Utah. So he's taking on the center. He's got the guard as well. That leaves, um, I think this is an eye. And then Fotu and then whoever this pass rusher is one-on-one. -on -one. And that's where those guys have to make their money. And uh, you can see, you know, they bring a little bit of blitz here and it leaves someone wide open to get to the quarterback. Um, they just weren't able to get there in time. Once again, here's our guy, John Penasini. And uh, this one, I think, is going to be a run. This is actually one of the best plays I saw out of Penasini that I watched. This one could have been the highlight reel. I don't think you can even find a highlight reel on him because he doesn't have any, like, whoa, like, flashy plays. It's hard to find him. But if you do want to pull one in here, I think this one's good. You know, he's able to kind of sidestep the offensive lineman, get the inside control, and he's able to make a nice uh, arm tackle there. And he's a big guy. You know, he's got he's got a great size, six foot one, 318 pounds. He's basically like hitting, uh, he's like hitting a truck. You know, an offensive lineman's not going to run him over. You know, he's not going to push him out of the play too often. He's just big. He's just big. I'm not saying he's going to push the offensive lineman, but he's a big dude. I mean, he's going to stuff them. That's what you want, right? A run stuffer. It's not a run rusher, right? It's a, it's a run stuffer. The dude just stuffs the run. He's just big. He's long, and he's and he's big. <laughs> like, he's not getting pushed out of the play. He's not getting pushed around. He could take on those two offensive linemen at once, and he could stand his ground, and he could reach out and grab a, a running back, okay? That's what he brings to the table. Here we go. You saw a little air over there. John Penasini, once again, our guy, John Penasini. Again, the center and guard taken, at least everybody else one-on-one, -on -one, and that's where they need to make their money. And now he's completely turned around, but it ends up being a sack. It ends up being a, kind of like a coverage sack, but it is slowed down. So that's what we see out of him. Uh, let's go back a little bit. But that's just something I want to point out, because that's what some, I think, you know, in pass rush, his ability to get to the quarterback isn't great. And you'll see that here, I think. But when he's one-on-one, -on -one, it isn't great. He doesn't win a lot of one-on-ones. It's mainly his ability to stuff the run and uh, his ability, his size that can force you to take to take two guides towards him and the center to make that adjustment to go towards him. The only concern I see here is that if the center doesn't go towards him and he's one-on-one, -on -one, he needs to be able to win a couple of those battles just to keep the lineman honest. Um, but, you know, hopefully with a guy like Nick Williams. And if you think about what the lines are building here, if he's on the field, say, with Nick Williams, who had six sacks, he's no more as a defense tackle that gets to the quarterback. So... 
we'll see how they go about it. But again, it's just mainly a run stuffer. You can see here once again, I think this is where he's by himself. So you can see the center took full two here. And he, I mean, he got a little bit there, a nice little swim move it looked like kind of, but there's, you know, there's not much there. I mean, you consistently, there's really not a lot here. Now this is interesting. This is interesting. I don't know if this was meant to happen. I don't think it was. I think it's that he came and he decided he wasn't going to get there. Look at this dude, man. But this is great awareness. This is being smart if this wasn't designed. It might have been. I don't know. Either way, he drops back. This is not an athletic player. Knowing he can't get there. And he kind of drops back into his zone here. Kind of just trying to make sure, you know, no one goes by his face. You can see the wide receiver catches it. He isn't able to bring him down because he's just not that quick. But he does get him to stumble, which allows uh, this, this secondary player to come make a tackle. Here he is again. Once again in the interior. Again, a slow release. Look at this release, y'all. This is one concern I, I really do have that I've seen more of him. Watch this. Okay, now the pass rusher gets there. I just think maybe an eye maybe looks him looks slower, maybe makes him look slower than he is. But again, one on one, I mean, there's really no push whatsoever. There was really no push for there whatsoever. Uh, yeah, he wasn't going anywhere. Um, okay, so again versus Texas, we got a lot of Texas clips here because I thought this was a good one. An eye's just quick off the ball, man. I just I didn't really notice that. Again, they take on two though, and at least everybody else one on one. And this is when you need your other D lineman. This is when we need Trey Flowers. This is when we need Hand Oquara. I'm trying to think who else might be coming. You know, Nick Williams. Danny Shelton, if he's still on the field at the same time, which I don't think they will be a lot. Any of those pass rushers, right? Did I, Romeo Okwara, Julian Okwara. Did I leave off anybody? I don't know. I probably did. Those guys need to get to the quarterback when, you know, they had these one-on-ones. And uh, in the Lions scheme, this makes sense to make this pick because you want, you know, guys, you want your defense line to be a one-on-one -on -one because you are all about covered sacks. We saw it before. Here's, okay, you know, he kind of tries to split there a little bit. But here's, I think, is where is the energy I see. This is just energy. This is heart. This is passion. Look, so he's still staying into play. He's staying with it. Look at him just throw this dude down. I just thought that was, I was like, okay, I see you, John. I love that. I love that. Okay, I love that anger. Bring that anger to Detroit. That's good stuff. And then uh, once again, yep, double teams. He's opened up everybody else. And uh, yeah, you see, you know, he's forced to move around because he's one on ones. And most times, you know, that's what an offensive line is going to do, unless you're, you know, bringing more than four. If you're bringing four, you know, someone's going to be double teamed because you have five offensive linemen. But, you know, that's just something that you're going to utilize him with. And uh, that's something that offensive lines utilize him. And again, you can see it on the blitz, it allows someone to get there. The dude didn't tackle him, though. Oh my gosh, where are you going to make that tackle? And I think this is the final clip that we do have. This is kind of a short and sweet one, man. This is just what I saw out of him. Yeah, I think this is what he's going to do. You know, to me, his role is to be a guy that gets to the quarterback. Okay, a guy not gets to the quarterback. I just jacked that completely up. This is a run stuffer. Okay, and I think in his first year, he's not going to have a lot of playing time. But when he is on the field, I think he's a run stuffer. I think he's goal line situations. I think he's potentially special team situations. Maybe like field goal blocks, stuff like that. I think he's early downs, obviously. Um, and, I, and I think he's one of those guys that, you know, you kind of have out there Again, just throw stuff to run. I mean, that's that's what he does. He gets maybe get a few pressure plays here and there. And I think his ability to keep fighting and playing through the play is something that Matt Patricia loves to see in him. And I think it's that heart, it's that attitude, it's that character that he has that, you know, necessarily goes unlooked a lot of times in film. And then in the pass rushing side of things, there's just not much there. I mean, there's really not. He had like five tackles for loss and 22, 15 tackles for loss and 22 starts and five sacks. I mean, even the numbers don't tell you much. So again, I know his pass rush grade is better in 2018. So maybe he'll show you more of that, but you know, overall, I just think we got a run stuffer, and that's what he is. So I'm going to leave it there. Let me hear your thoughts comments below. What do you guys think about John Penasini? I still love this pick. I think we need to run stuffer, and getting a value like this in the sixth round is great. Thank you, Brad, for watching.